arrived on our doorstep. Roland SRM 20, which is a desktop milling machine. There's a bunch of other stuff in the box too. Composite for milling, bits, different like clamps and accessories. This is gonna be fun. So this really cool new machine comes and naturally Brooke just wants to play with the box. That was some good cardboard. living hinge handbag and all good things start with the first draft I prefer getting things cut and holding them in real life as I go because then I can measure the changes I want to make on something that I'm physically holding sketch on it, and then translate it into my digital design after. That's the manual. Hi. All right, Brooke's back. So it's on the box. Yeah. It had two bags. And it's time to set it up. Okay. And it says to go to startup.rollingdg.com. All you had to do was follow the instructions and click the next button a bunch of times, and it did it kind of all by itself. Now connect the machine to the power cord. I did have to plug it in, and I think that that was probably the hardest part of it. Ooh, it's moving. So we have finished the guide. Just like that, I'm ready to mill some stuff. Do you know what we didn't get done? What? We needed to do laser blanks for the website. Because okay, we're that. like out of them. Are you okay with doing it? Because I really want to do that. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Brooke asked me to prep some laser blanks because she's too busy playing with the box that the machine came in. So, I'm going to do that now. <laughs> These laser blanks are from local hardwood that we salvaged, and I'm getting the prep down to a science. While Michael loaded up the CNC bed with slab slices to plane down, I got to work on version number two of my design. I'm adding spots for magnetic closures, adding some accent leather, and then removing a few layers of living hinge. finished at the laser, we could trade places. I put the plain slabs into the laser cutter and then cut them down to size. If you are interested in checking out the laser cut blanks made out of the salvaged New England wood where all the best hardwood in the country comes from, Check out makersworkshop.com.
to the shop bright and early before everybody else because I am just that excited about this. It's time to cut this in mulberry. Good thing this big stack of laser ready wood is here. Saves me so much time. Mulberry has a really warm tone to it, so I thought it kind of paired with the citrus theme I have going on here. I started out with the smaller edge pieces just to make sure that my settings were to my liking before moving on to the big, larger piece that has the more delicate components of the living hinge and the lemon wedge. And then I layered on the painter's tape to prep this for a resin pour. And this was about the time when everyone started showing up to the shop for the day. So Maker's Workshop is a maker space. And what that means is that other people come in and use the shop alongside us. Whenever we get a new machine, it's exciting for us, but it's also exciting for the entire maker space. Especially Brian. Brian is a bit of a machine guy, and he has a really hard time containing his excitement. Hi, I'm Brian, and I'm a machine guy. I think that you'll agree, he was really giddy this day. This is my excited face. Everyone has just kind of learned that Brian has first dibs. <laughs> I'm the glue that holds this place together. That's kind of slick with a little jig there. What thing? Kind of slick. The thing that I made? Brian used it even before I did. The first cut is the best cut. This is what Brian and I do every weekend. It's a good time. And while those two do their thing, I'm getting this resin poured. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Step one is a thin coat of fast hardening resin to seal the grain. And then once that hardened, I filled up the wedge with the colors. And then while I waited for that to harden, I boxed up some sample cubes, I hung out with the members, just kind of hung out for a little bit. We made a really great project and I know that Michael and Brooke will treasure it for years. Well, that was fun.
And then I closed out my day by getting finish on all of my pieces. I put strategically positioned painter's tape on the box joints because I don't want finish on those because that'll interfere with the glue up. I think this method will work and I'm really glad I thought of it because I don't think I'd be able to glue it otherwise. Brian and I made a pretty epic project together, but I have an idea of how to make it better. So to get in and out of the makerspace, you just kind of scan one of these and the door opens. But we have two different types of locks that have two different frequencies, so that means two keys. So we're gonna take both of these keys and put them into one key. But first, we need to get the electronics out. going, I keep scanning the electronic to make sure that they're still working since I keep kind of fiddling with them and messing with them. So the only thing that's important to remember if you're using two different types of chips in the same keychain is that the little circuit boards cannot be anywhere near each other or one of them won't work. So you need to position it something like that. And now, back over to the milling machine. This is gonna be done in a series of carves. First, I'm hollowing out a pocket. So I can dump black resin all over them. All right, so I'm gonna be real careful pouring this because I do not want to get it on the machine. I am using Total Boat High Performance Epoxy with charcoal for coloring. I'm allowing the resin to cure for about an hour in between pours. Always use Total Boat. Once that hardened, I could run a next pass, which was a planing pass. All that did was flatten off the surface. Just for fun, I switched to a 30 degree V-bit and etched a logo into the top of this that I then filled with Total Boat UV resin. missing out on this. I'm gonna show you how I use UV resin. And this is really the only way that you can use UV resin. But this is how I do it, too. <laughs> A shallow pour, less than three millimeters thick, and then you shine the light a UV light on it for two minutes. Then I popped them out, sanded them up, and popped some finish on it. And I just used this random can that uh, Brooke had sitting out, but it's a pretty nice product. I think
think tomorrow I might make a bunch of them so I can give them to all the Makerspace members. Ah, it's a new day! I got here bright and early because I'm really excited for this and I wanted the shop to myself. At least for a little bit anyway. One of the biggest perks of having the makerspace is being afforded the time to get to focus on projects like these that are fairly detail oriented and time consuming, but just for myself. are finished uh, I can't really sand off any mistakes or glue drips here so I need to make sure that this is looking pretty perfect and then I get what I get It's good. I am going to make a gift for each one of the members and they are gonna love it. Maker's Workshop is the kind of makerspace that now has 